Nobody there. I looked to my left. He said, refuge fell me. No man cared for my soul. But I'm happy to tell you we've got people today that care. They care enough. They don't mind being offended. They don't mind knocking on somebody's door. Uh, I got to share this with y'all. Last Sunday afternoon, I had the privilege of being with Brother Enrique, Brother James over here. We went to an apartment complex down the way. And we prayed before we left that the Lord would lead us to the right people. And I believe he answered that prayer. We walked up on a group of high school boys, junior high boys, on the steps at the apartment there where they lived. They were resting. They had the soccer ball out. They'd been playing ball. and We caught them taking a break. But then Ricky asked them the usual question. If you died tonight, would you go to heaven? Could you, are you assured you'd go to heaven? Now, you get the picture here. Here are six boys, high school, junior high, peer pressure at war. And they stopped and they talked with us. And Brother Ren Ricky, one by one, would ask them their name and talk to them direct. And they all confessed that they were a sinner. And then Brother Enrique asked them, would they like to be saved? And they prayed the sinner's prayer with him on the spot. Six of them there came to know the Lord. And as we were concluding, one of them's mother saw us out there and she wanted to know what this was all about. She came out and she got saved. Now, they're not here this morning, but we're working on getting them here. Uh, but the important thing is they've got salvation they'll never lose because the Lord said he'd forgive us, didn't he, if we confess our sin. And they did that in our presence. In presence of peer pressure, they did it one by one. And, folks, we need to care for the souls of men. And that's what it's about. All right. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Peter says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. He cared for us. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Never forget that. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us into eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All right, let's hold up on the scriptures for a moment. Caring about the spiritual welfare of souls ought to be a great part of our lives as a Christian. By the way, pray for the people over in African countries, especially right now of Nigeria. I saw an article this morning where they said right now on an average that 11 of them are put to death each day for their claim to Christianity. The Muslims are executing an average of 11 of them per day. But let's think a moment now about caring for the souls. Someone cared enough for us to share the message of Christ, didn't they? With us. 
and thank God for the gospel of Christ. When I was growing up, I grew up in a church. My mama saw to that. But come around revival time, they, they like to count numbers sometimes, and that's wrong, folks. But they sent a guy one time to talk to me, and I had not yet made a profession of faith. And I'll never forget, they took a little watch with a chain on it, and the guy swung it in my face. I'm about 10, 11 years old. I said, boy, time's running out. What time's running out? They didn't tell me about Jesus and love me. They just tell me time running out. Well, it's right because when we, when we're born, we go to die, and we all gonna die one day. But no one told me of that fact that Jesus loved me enough to die for me. Or well, the basics of the gospel. Consequently, I wasn't saved then. But the important thing here is that we care for the souls of men. But the Lord cares for us. That's what he said, because he careth for us. If he careth for us, certainly we ought to care to do his bidding and bring the lost in. But we need to carefully and prayerfully consider this subject this morning. But we ought to care about the souls of men because God cares. Amen. He cares for us, doesn't he? He cared enough for us that he included us in his plan of salvation. In his plan for the ages. You know the Bible tells us that Jesus stood as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The Father already knew that the Son was going to offer his life on the cross before we got here. That was God's eternal plan to show us that he loved his creation that he made in his own image. If you would, look down at the next scripture on your page. Revelation 4, verse 10 and verse 11. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and they worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crown before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are, and they were created. God wasn't just a whittling or a piddling when he made mankind, was he? He had a plan, a plan for the ages. And he made us part of his plan. His well-designed plan, I might say, because he is the great architect. Scripture said there was nothing that was made that was made but, but by him, meaning Jesus. But look, if we'll, at your next scripture, Acts 15, verse 18. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Oh, God is all-knowing. He searches the reins of our heart, does he not? And that's why we need to pray, Lord, cleanse our heart. As David prayed, create in, within me a clean heart. And folks, we need that heart, that spiritual, that's clean. But the fact that he included us in the measure is a measure of the value of a soul. Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange 
for his soul. If you won the lottery, and I heard him say they gave a big one, somebody won a big one this week on the news. But if you won 750 million, something like that, what are you going to do with it? It can't buy your life, folks. It can't buy that eternal soul. That soul's going to live forever somewhere. Or at least it's going to exist. Because God made us that soul, an eternal part of us. But God cares so much that he's designed a perfect plan of redemption. He's classified the souls of men, not angels or animals, as being worthy of redemption. My understanding, according to the scripture, the Lord said he hadn't given the first angel what he gave man. The Bible doesn't say he made the angels in his own image. It said he made man in his own image. And the scripture says we're going to rule over the angels when that time comes. The angels were in heaven before we were made. You, you well know that some of those angels were cast out of heaven because they became followers of Satan. But if you would look at Hebrews 13, 14, actually, uh, let's skip over that one. Let's go to the next one. Isaiah 53, verse 11 and 12. He shall see the travail of his soul, and he shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Oh, that's God's perfect plan. He assures us that the Redeemer has paid the full price. Oh, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Whatever sin that may be. Sin is sin, isn't it? But the Lord says he saves us from our sin, puts our sin from us, and remembers them against us no more. You know, mankind doesn't do that, does he? Man doesn't forgive like God. I hear a lot of people say a lot of times, and I'll just forewarn you, don't be guilty of saying this. I'll forgive you, but I'm not going to forget it. But our Lord said he'd put our sin from us as the east is from the west. Anybody got a measuring stick out this morning? Tell me how far that is. How far is the east from the west? Think about it a minute. You can't comprehend it, can you? Because when you go that way east... You go in eternity. Or if you go west, there's an eternity. The Lord said he cast our sin from us in, as it, into the depths of the sea. And folk, if God said it, that's good enough for me. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins all of our sins, 
and remember them against us no more. Well, God covers all sin. He's not a respecter of persons nor of sin, is he? All right. But we ought to care about souls today because we've been blessed by the Lord who cares for us so much. When God told Abraham to leave the land of Ur of Chaldee where he was at and go to a land that I'll show you, which was the land of Canaan, he said, and I'll give you a seed That shall be a blessing to all nations. And folk, that seed was Jesus Christ who came through Abraham. And through him all nations have been blessed. Many of us have been blessed with the grand privilege of hearing the wonderful message of the gospel. Folk, it's simple, isn't it? Probably everyone here this morning can quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth him he should not perish but have everlasting life. Whoever. Folk, that invitation is international, eternal. But we ought to care, and I want to finish up on these thoughts here this morning, about the souls of men because of what they face without Jesus. Every soul without Jesus is lost. Jesus said, you, again, I told you all last Sunday, but I'm going to tell you again. You're for me, or you're against me. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. There's no neutral ground, is it? But every soul without Christ again is condemned apart from God. And he's doomed for eternal woe and misery. You would look at Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers or drug pushers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power. Amen. Well, we as Christians have to let this old flesh die, put it off. But we don't have to die spiritually. That's why our Lord gave his son. But we ought to care about souls today because it's a basis for the progress of the Lord's work. If you would, look down in Romans chapter 9, verse 1. And we'll see what the apostle Paul thought about the souls of men. And listen real close. This ought to be where we are. Paul said, I say the truth in Christ. He was a witness. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren. 
my kinsmen according to the flesh. I could wish myself accursed from my brethren. Paul loved the souls of men. But then finally, as our care and concern begin to operate, we become more involved in the things which promote the kingdom of God. And let's look at that last two verses on our page. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Folk, you can't live in the past. You can't change the past. You've got to live now. And you can't live for 10 years from now. You've got to live now. And do the Lord's will as you have opportunity. And the Lord said, as much as we have opportunity, let us do good unto all men. Could be somebody here this morning that haven't put your faith in Christ. We're going to give you that opportunity to do that right where you are. Simply say, God, I know I'm a sinner. And I'm trusting your son to be my savior. And I'll further say, the Lord said, Him that cometh unto me, I'll in no wise cast out. Amen. He's never turned the first person away that came to him. So we're going to stand right now and we're going to have an invitation song. If you're here this morning and you want to make things right with the Lord, we're going to give you that privilege to come as we stand together and as we sing, what number do you have, Brother Ricky? Five, three, four.